The Seattle International Film Festival is over, so let's talk about all the movies that I watched. Hey everybody, my name's Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Click that bell notification for more up and coming content. This year I attended the Seattle International Film Festival. I watched some of the films remotely at home. It's really hard to get up to Seattle. I live about 45 minutes from there, so I have to be picky about screenings and advanced screenings for you know big releases and film festivals as well luckily i received some screeners for some films and they had a remote option as well i didn't get to see a lot of movies i was sick during the week of the remote screening so i wasn't able to fully watch as much as i wanted to but i did watch five films and i'm excited to talk about each one and i'll give a mini review for each one the first one I watched was I Like Movies, which is directed by Chandler Levack. And this is about a socially inept 17-year-old cinephile named Lawrence Queller who gets a job at a video store where he forms a complicated friendship with his older female manager. This was the first film I watched, and I really did like this movie. You understand this young man's uh, love of cinema. It takes place like in the early 2000s when Punch Drunk Love was first released. So the conversations that the characters have about film was very interesting because that's how I remember growing up in high school and colleges, forming relationships with my friends over film. And the passion that he has for film and just watching movies and discussing it is what I love to do. And then the movie slowly starts to transition into this young man and how he's dealing with the loss of his father and uh, depression. And he has a hard time socializing with people and it becomes very emotional and very personal look at this young man and what he's going through and how he uses cinema as an outlet and a way to form relationships. So the film can go easily from being a lighthearted, fun movie about cinema and the love for films in this workplace style comedy at a movie store but then it slowly starts to transition and peeling back this character and more in-depth look at him and what he's struggling with. And as we get to know him more, we get to know what he is dealing with and how people around him are kind of navigating their relationship. So I Like Movies was a solid way to start off this festival. It had that nice balance of um, the, the cinema and the love for cinema and how he's able to kind of form that relationship with his friends and discuss movies a lot of punch drunk love but then also looking more at this character gives it that more dramatic look at the film and the next film i watched was a disturbance in the force how the star wars holiday special happened which was directed by jeremy kuhn and steve kozak and this is essentially just looking at the holiday special that god awful star wars special uh, really just looking in depth of when it was created, how it came about, and the fandom behind it all, and the hatred it gets, with a lot of great celebrities being interviewed throughout. I can't help but think that this was a film that was just reading off of like Wikipedia or articles about what had happened in chronological order. There's not many moments where you get the sense of the love for Star Wars or the holiday special throughout. Since it does feel like it is just reading off of these bullet points, it's hard to get that sense of uh, that love for Star Wars throughout this special. We got interviews with Seth Green, Kevin Smith, Weird Al Yankovic, Donny Osmond, Taron Killam. It's fun how people perceived the special back when it was released and how it's affected them now. Looking especially like at Donny Osmond and how he was affected by the special as well. But then also looking at the setup for Star Wars and the tone and how it was established. And then going so far off with that holiday special. It was fun to see all the clips of the holiday special but the editing for this it was a little bit off when they were transitioning from the existing clips for the special to the interviews for to the interviews within this film. 
I did get a lot of new information since I haven't read up on this holiday special. I have seen it. I couldn't help but get the sense that this was already information like on an article and it was just like bullet points that they were going through. I did enjoy seeing the different celebrities being interviewed and the clips for the special as well. It was a fun thing and not the best documentary I've ever seen, but I enjoyed it for what it was. The next film I watched was Year of the Fox, which was probably the most disappointing movie I saw during the festival. A 17-year-old Ivy, who was adopted as an infant into a wealthy and notable Aspen family, is navigating the fallout of her parents' bitter divorce. This stars Sarah Jeffrey, who I recognize from the Descendants film, and she was also in that uh, Velma and Daphne live action movie. The reason it's so disappointing is because you don't get the sense of the director's style in this movie. The voiceover from Sarah Jeffrey describing uh, her parents' divorce and trying to understand a little bit of her character it feels very bland and we don't get enough personality into that. You don't get the sense of all of the emotions surrounding this divorce and this young girl bouncing back between her father and her mother and part of it does take place in Washington. So it was one of the highlights for the festival, but uh, the story is there. The trauma and all the dramatic moments really could have developed a personal emotional movie, but everything about it from the director's style to the performances, it just feels very one note. I couldn't get the sense of the director's style and uh, the emotions within this movie. Even the performances from Sarah Jeffrey, when it calls for these heightened sequences of her uh, being in the middle of this divorce, you see what they're going for, but they quite don't deliver on it. I wanted to like it. It was one of the first films that was promoted for the festival for me, and uh, I recognized some of the names behind it and some of uh, the locations set in Washington, so I was excited to see this movie, but I just found myself to be quite disappointed with this movie. The story is strong. It's there. It has a lot of potential, but the performances, direct it's not bad it's just very bland and I think it could have had some more flavor to it more style to really set itself apart from other movies but it was a fine one-time watch it's not a movie I'm going to probably ever re-watch again and I wasn't affected by this young girl's relationship with her family and their divorce as well I knew I should I thought I should have been watching all of these sequences but I just could not feel that way the next movie I watched was called Egghead and Twinkie, directed by Sarah Holland. This is a coming-of-age comedy. The film follows a teenage girl named Twinkie as she comes out to her parents and takes off on a cross-country road trip to meet her mysterious online crush. She even convinces her nerdy best friend Egghead to come along for the ride. I really like this movie. It's got a fun style to it. A lot of uh, animation that pops on screen if it's the conversations or see, like notes or little animation here and there it's uh it has a fun direction behind it and it makes the pacing for it move very quickly and then you get a sense of this strong relationship between egghead and twinkie as they go on this road trip twinkie is trying to meet up with her online crush bd and egghead is there to be a supportive friend but he also has feelings for twinkie as well so there's like some complicated uh sequences throughout but we do have a very solid look at this friendship and the character's growth in this road trip coming of age comedy i love looking at each of these characters but then also their relationships as well and how they are growing throughout the film at times this film is very heartwarming and honest as well looking at this realistic relationships of these teenagers there's some highs and lows for these characters and understanding what you want out of life at a young age 
is all fully realized within this movie. So Egghead and Twinkie was a fun movie. I like the performances in here when the characters, uh, when it calls for the characters to have these dramatic personal moments, they're there to deliver some really good performances. The animation that pops on screen, it's very quirky and fun as well. It has that fun sense of style to it that works for this movie as this young girl is also really into anime. So we kind of see that influence throughout this movie. I did like this movie better than some of the films I saw at the festival and I highly recommend checking it out when it is released. And the last movie I saw was The Modishine Family which is directed by Andy Valentine and this is a family drama that focuses on the struggle between Thomas and Oscar as they build a queer family together. However, when one of the couple's sons becomes curious about his birth parents, things take a complex turn. I feel like this movie is split into two different parts and I'm struggling with this movie because one part of the movie is the struggle between this couple. The son that they had for a year went back to their mother, so they're struggling with that as they formed a strong connection. We saw that in the beginning of the movie, and uh, one half of this couple wants to adopt again and be a family, and the other half uh, wants to focus on their career. And so we have that complicated look at family, which is honestly very realistic. But then the movie wants to focus on the friendships as well, and how everybody's kind of navigating all of this and that strong connection. You feel like a lot of the themes is about friendship and being there for one another. And I think the movie could have had a more narrow focus and really focusing just on maybe one part of the story rather than splitting it in between the couple and uh, their struggles with overcoming what happened to their son or choose to focus on the friendships as well because I don't feel like either side is fully developed. It's fighting against each other for screen time. I wasn't affected by either part of the story. I wasn't moved by the different sides of this film. I felt like there were some emotional scenes in here and some really good performances and a direction that really did work. This is written by Danny Valentine and also directed by his husband, Andy Valentine. So there's a lot of connection to this movie, but I think that split look at both uh, partners and then also friendships as well, but also both of the partners are part of this friend group. So there's a lot of people involved with in this movie and we have to have a connection to the group, but also separated from that group is the partners. And uh, I feel like each, I feel like the story is there. The story is solid. I think it could have had very dramatic personal moments to it, but I couldn't get past that split look at the story and the themes were trying to overpower the one another. And uh, I feel like moments were overshadowed and uh, weren't fully developed, but I did like this movie for what it was and those more emotional scenes throughout because the performances are really good in here and it's worth watching the movie throughout. There was a great story in here, but it wasn't fully realized and structured the appropriate way. So there you guys have it, all five SIF movies I watched. Did you guys see any movies during the Seattle International Film Festival? I know a lot of people who watched and covered a lot more content than I did. So I recommend checking out a lot of people's different uh, coverage on the festival. If you were in Seattle, what did you see? Did you see films online? It was fun to see all these movies and hopefully next year I can check out a little more. But with me being sick, I wasn't up to watching more films and head out to Seattle to check out some films because they had some really good movies I wanted to see like Past Lives, new A24 film. But I know a lot of people in the Seattle area and who's also part of the Critics Society like myself that covered a lot of films. So make sure to check out other Seattle critics and their coverage on all of these films that they saw during the festival because there are a lot of films for the festival. Thank you guys for checking out my five reviews for the films I saw at the Seattle International Film Festival. Stay tuned for more up and coming content like this. My name is Just Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.